Are you ready for some high adventure? Coming up next on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Keep your heads down, both of you. They're shooting at us. I can see that. How does that make you feel? What? I'm just curious, Mr. Venice. It makes me want to freak out a little bit. How about you? Oh, this isn't about me. It's about you. What is she talking about? The podcast she's doing. You agreed to it. I know that, but bullets are whizzing by my head and affecting my memory. Sorry. Do you want me to shoot back? No, that will only make them mad. They're pretty mad as it is. Come on, I bet I can take a couple of them out. Tabitha? Here, give me your gun. Wow, listeners. She just took out two of the gunmen, shooting at us in this alley on the outskirts of town. What, listeners? What is she talking about? For her podcast. She's not broadcasting this live, is she? No. I have to edit it in post. In what? Just focus on keeping your head down, Lou. How does it make you feel, Tabitha, to shoot two assailants? Can I be honest with you? Please do. It feels pretty awesome. Tabitha! Head down, Lou. That's one more down for the count. Listeners, this is the height of what it's like to shadow the private detective, Lou Venice. Please tell me this isn't live. You haven't been listening to me. She's going to record a bunch of stuff and edit in post-production. You're speaking a different language. Talk English. She's going to put together the best bits from her hanging out with us the past couple of days. And cut out the bad stuff? Absolutely. So about here would be a good spot to cut and go back to when we first met. Cut? What's that mean? She would edit her recording about right here. Right here. Yes, keep your head down. And so that's what I'd like to do. Shadow Lou? If he'll let me. For your podcast? Yes, it's called Handcuffs, a short history of crime detection. Do you have a lot of listeners? A few. That's great. I'm sure he would be fine with it. Really? He needs all the good press he can get. Is he coming into the office today? Oh, he's here. He sleeps in his office. That's dedicated. No, His wife booted him out a couple of months ago, and he's cheap. I see. But not with my paycheck. I keep the books and pay myself what I think I'm worth. That's nice. It sure is. So should I come back later when he's awake? No. Hold that thought. Lou, get up. Time to get some work done. He's on a case. He sure is. Can I ask what it is? He's been shadowing a husband for a certain wife. Oh, one of those kinds of cases. That's right. I didn't think most detectives took those kinds of cases. Lou does. Tabitha? Are you decent? In what way decent? As in, do you have a robe on? Hold that thought. Ew. Wow, I'm about to meet my first real private detective. Yeah, well... Is it morning or afternoon? Oh, hello. Jamie Evans. Lou Venice, private detective. I call him the Unguth Sleuth. Not to my face, you don't. Have you made fresh coffee lately? Not since a couple of days ago. You've been on surveillance, and I don't touch that stuff. There's some left in the pot here. It's from two days. That is good stuff. Ew. Mr. Venice, I'm wanting to shadow you for my podcast. Just say yes, Lou. What's a podcast? Lou. What? Say yes. Yes. Great. When do we start? And just like that, she edits out all the other junk that we don't want people to hear. That's right. I'm curious how you're feeling about the case right now, Lou. Not all that great, if you want me to be honest about it. Into the mic? We're getting shot at here, Jamie. You need to speak into her microphone if you want your voice recorded. Watch it. So, let's do this again. How do you feel about the case? It bites really hard and you can quote me on that one. Give me that gun. I've got it. Do what you do best. What would that be? Ask him. Don't ask me any more questions. I'm trying to remember if my life insurance is paid up. It is. I paid the premium last month. Who's the beneficiary? I am. Duh. So as the bullets sail all around us, I think it might be good to remind the listeners of how you got to this point. I said yes to taking the case when I should have said, not on your life, I'm going on a staycation. Watch it, there's a thug at 9 o'clock. On it. I think you killed that guy, Tabitha. Oh. Did you want me to wound them? I can do that. Lou, remind us of how you got to this point in the case. I just did. I'm going to need another clip here in another minute. Can do. Lou. Yeah, okay, okay. I said yes to tailing the guy for the wife, and so we did. And how did you start doing that? We were staking out the guy's apartment. That his wife didn't know about. Shoot that guy over there, please! (laughs) 
Okay, who had the ham and cheese? I did. Thanks. Here, Tabitha, you had the hummus on rye. I did not. Don't joke about my sandwich. My apologies. Bologna and cheddar. That's more like it. This is exciting. An actual stakeout. Here, let me start recording. You're not really all that great, Jamie. You sit around all night long with not much happening, and you eat out of a bag, and you start to get sick of your own stench. But you're on the case, and that should excite you. Yeah, whatever. You got mustard on this, Lou. You're like mustard. Not with my bologna. With my roast beef? Sure. With my turkey and Swiss? Absolutely. But not with my bologna. I like mayonnaise with my bologna. Noted. So what do we think is going on behind those closed doors right now? You mean the guy's place? The guy we're tailing? Yes, him. What is your podcast rated? What do you mean? Do kids listen to this thing? Folks of all ages listen. Then we shouldn't tell you what's going on. Oh, you mean that nice lady who knocked this door and went in is... Yes, she most certainly is. Wow, this is wild. What happens next? The fun part. Not really. Don't listen to him. What happens next? Lou. I'm about to leave the car and go get some evidence of the affair. Evidence? What kind? You don't want to know. Your listeners should hear this, Jamie. Hand me that mic. So, hey there, listeners. I hope you're all doing okay tonight. This isn't live, Lou. It's not? You're kidding me. She's recording it to edit later. You're speaking French to me, and I don't know French. So, Lou, the evidence. Yeah, right, the evidence. Listeners, I'm about to take my camera, and I'm going to sneak up to the perp's window. Perp? Really? And then I'm going to take some artistic photographs for use in the upcoming divorce case. What kind of pictures? Jamie, come on. It should be obvious. Let me surprise you. I'll take a couple hundred and we'll go enjoy them in my favorite watering hole. But... Hold that thought. Hmm. Photographic proof? Let your imagination go wild, Jamie. What are you... Oh. Ew. My sentiments exactly. And he enjoys doing that. Enjoy is such an overused word. What would you say then? Let's just say he's good at this part of the job. Ew. You said it, sister. Uh Uh-oh. Why is he running back? Get ready to hold on. Go, go, go! Floor it! Get in it and then I will. What happened? You don't want to know. Just drive. Lou. Okay, fine. I got plenty of pics. No prob. But... He saw me. Lou! He saw you. Doesn't that mean the case? How did he see you? You're an Olympian athlete when it comes to taking... Yeah, yeah. My guess, he's got infrared alarms or something. Or he's onto his wife of being onto him. Aw, man! Does that mean the case is closed? Nope. It means it got a bit more complicated. This is getting monotonous. It is making the recording a bit difficult. Because we're getting shot at. Keep your head down. You got him. He's bleeding from his chest. Probably won't be for too much longer. Uh, I don't understand. What happened to the hail of bullets? Good question. Does that mean this part of the case is over? Not by a long shot. Pardon the pun. It's pardoned. So? Keep your head down. It means they're regrouping and trying to get a better lay of the land. What for? To kill us. Haven't you been paying attention? I'm just trying to make sure I'm recording all of this. Just so you know, Tabitha, this whole podlatch thing was a bad idea for the agency. I've got two rounds left and then I need to think about reloading. Why? So you can commit more mass murder? Stop exaggerating, Lou. I got into this business to detect things, not shoot people. But you're not the one doing the shooting. You know what I mean. I think a couple of them are trying to get around behind us. I take it that's a bad thing. Uh, yeah. Lou, with the bad guys closing in on all sides, I was wondering, what's going through your mind right now? Are you kidding me? Right now? Anger, rage, vengeance. I'm about to pee myself, okay? Happy now, I'm about to relieve myself all over the place. Lou, cool it. Whose name is on the door? Yours. So that makes me the boss. If you say so. I do say so, and if I want to pee my pants, I am going to do it. Have fun with that. I will. That wasn't quite the answer I was looking for, Lou. Tough. Edit in post. If you'd taken my advice and submitted your invoice... What? We wouldn't be in this situation. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. That should be on our letterhead. It's true, though, Lou. You did make the decision to pursue the case further. I thought we needed to dig a little deeper and see what was actually going on. Thank goodness I had my recorder going, or he wouldn't have it for my show. Yeah, lucky us. Over there! On it. Tabitha! What? I wouldn't have them like you asked me to. Still... They aren't dead, are they? How often does a detective spy on his own client? It happens more than you might think. Especially with us. Two days ago, the doc. One more, one o'clock! So, listeners, here we are at the city dock on another round of surveillance, and this time on the client. A detective who turns his skills on his own client is an interesting twist, isn't it? 
with the client's husband aware that he's being watched, our detective is digging for the truth. The actual truth. Who is she talking to? No one. It's my... She's recording this for later. Would you try and keep up? What is she doing over there on that boat? Sunbathing. Give me those goggles. Binoculars. Whatever. There's a big difference. So you say. No offense, but this feels like a waste of time. A lot of detective work does. I hate to tell you that. Oh, I see. I take that back. I don't hate telling you that. I love telling you that. Oh, I see. Hmm. What? What's she doing now? Drinking champagne. Lucky. One of the reasons I wanted to shadow a private detective is because I thought there might be some action. You know, car chases, gun battles. That never happens. The detective business is usually pretty boring, Jamie. Hold on. What now? Let me look. She's waving at someone in a boat. She sure is, and they're staring her way. Who is it? No idea. Give me those things, Tabitha. Fine, here. They don't work. She looks like she's nine miles away. You have them backwards. Oh, sure. I knew that. Who is it? I'm sure he doesn't know. Holy cow, it's Bobby Johnson! Bobby Johnson? Is that someone we should... The best safecracker in this part of the country. Bobby Two Fingers Johnson? Two Fingers? Do I want to know why he's called that? He only has two fingers. How did that... Long story. Mr. Venice, do you have something to do with... I said it was a long story. A boring story. You wouldn't be interested. Lou bit off the other two fingers. But not the thumb. I had nothing to do with that. I think this is something my listeners would like. No. I think I should be the judge of... I told you already. It's a real snoozer. Boring. Not exciting at all. You bit off a man's fingers, and it's boring. Yes. Come on. No, as in in N-O. Hold on a sec. Is he boarding her boat? He sure is, with a big package in his arms. He's putting it down on the deck. They're talking. Now what are they doing? Swapping spit. What? Lou, give me those binoculars back. Well? Yep, that's what they're doing. And now they're going below deck. To do what? Uh... Oh. Yeah, more of what was going on at her husband's. Shouldn't you get your camera and go over? Absolutely not. She's our client. Yeah, I can see how that would be a problem. We need to see what's in that package. Did he leave it on the deck? He did. But Lou, we really shouldn't. What's he doing now? What he always does. Running into things before he thinks. Isn't that a good thing when you're a detective? Not on your life. What are we going to do then? Go after him. We have to get out of here. Hold your horses. We need to know what Bobby brought on board. Should I have my recorder going on now? No, go away. You need to hurry up if you're going to look. Stay over by the railing. Uh... Shh. Mr. Venice? Hush her up, will you? What's wrong, Jamie? Someone's coming up from below the thingy there. Oh, great. What do we do now? Jump, but do it very quietly. Just how many thugs did they send? Enough to call attention to ourselves. That's right. Shouldn't the police be here by now? They should. Hold that thought. I told you to wound them. You got that guy in the face. The ear. Get it right. You shot his ear off? Yes. Did you mean to do that? Of course I did. Wow. I know. She's bloodthirsty for a secretary. I'm not your secretary, Lou. Just give me a second. I'm an administrative assistant. Get it right. My apologies maniac. Hey, now. Not you, the guy up there on the balcony. Ouch. I think you'll feel that in the morning. If he doesn't wake up dead. I think now might be a good time to go over what happened next in the case. We were all wet. Yes, we were. In your office. Sorry to interrupt, but in case anything happens to me, Lou, I paid the rent on the office and the cleaning bill. You're caught up until next month. Thanks, Tabitha. You're a peach. So, when we regroup back at your office... That's when the pieces started to fall into place. Something sure did fall. Ah! Would you go over in the corner and finish toweling off? I still have my clothes on. You better. That was my best bookshelf. I noticed it didn't have any books on it, Mr. Venice. Yeah, but it had all my other stuff. My globe and statue of that horse I like so much and the bumper off of my car. Lou, dry off. Less talk. Do you mind if I move the stuff off your chair here and sit down? I'm pooped. Do what I do. Hey! No talking. Drying off. (coughs) Lou! Sorry, I swallowed half the ocean. Salt water gives me the burps. This case is starting to confuse me. You were hired to follow the husband of your client. You follow him. He finds you out. You watch your client on her boat. She starts making out with this safecracker guy. Two Fingers Johnson. Yeah, him. It's real that you bit his two fingers off. But not his thumb, and that's for the record. 
but you won't explain how that happened. Jamie, it's a horrible story, okay? It's not for the faint of heart. If I told you, I'd have to restart therapy. Oh, got it. We sneak on board of the boat to see what two fingers brought your client, and then we jump overboard. Not before I saw what was inside the package. Yeah, about that. You want to share with the rest of us? That would be telling, wouldn't it? Lou, tell. You're getting a bit bossy these days, Tabitha. We need to review the employer-employee. Ow! That's my ear! I know it is. Would you like me to rip it off and hand it to you? No, thank you! Spill what you saw in the package. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Ow! Okay, the Gurgan Blue Diamonds! The Gurgan Blue Diamonds? Yep. No way, Lou. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Let go of my ear. Fine. What are the Gurgan Blue Diamonds? A rare matching set of seven, eight carat South African diamonds. And blue diamonds are some of the most valuable stones in the world. How do you know that they're... Oh, I know. And guess what? They're owned by... Our client's husband. Hey, you stole my thunder! We need to visit Two Fingers Johnson. I couldn't have said it better myself. And that's where the case took a turn for the worst. You said it. I didn't want this case. Shut up. You like eating, don't you? Too much. Just shoot some bad guys, would you? I must say, in all my history of producing podcasts, I haven't seen anything like what we saw. How long have you been producing podcasts? A couple of months, but that's not the point. I have to be honest here, this podcast has traumatized me. You'll live. But that guy won't over there. Won't him for goodness sake. Party pooper. You shot the gun out of his hand. But he's still coming this way. Hold that thought. Who, in the knee? Now he's crawling towards us. Don't worry about him. What should I be worried about? The two on the roof. I don't think there's anything to worry about now. Yes, listeners, we are in the thick of a gun battle with an array of villains who are shooting at us for who knows why. I'm not sure either, and I'm not certain our detectives know either. I'm working on it. Give me a break. Just let me say, listeners, when we found two fingers, let's just say, you know what? I'll put that clip in post. You both might want to duck. Yeah, this is a good spot to edit that in. I'm not sure this is a good idea. Neither am I, but here we are. Two Fingers isn't answering his phone, and he's always officed out of here. A thief that has an office? Times are good for being a thief. What can I say? If we get caught... We won't. But... Jamie, you worry about the little things in life. We got this. You mean, I've got this. You know me in locks, Tabitha. I'm all thumbs. No offense, Mr. Venice, but what exactly is your function in the agency? It's my name on the door. Enough said. Oh. Should I call and get a pizza while you work on this lock? Would you like to do this? As I said, not really my thing. I didn't think so. Finally! Listeners, we are about to enter the office of the thief and robber, Two Fingers. Hold that thought, Jamie. It looks empty to me. Except for one thing. What's that? The body on the floor over there. Is that a large hole in his head? That would be affirmative. Whoa. Hold that thought. I've got to empty my stomach. I thought Mr. Venice had seen this type of thing before. He has. Dozens of times. He just can't do corpses with half of their heads blown off. Oh, and ew. My sentiments as well. All done? Emptied out completely. I feel sorry for the janitor. That hallway is quite the mess. Well? Is it two fingers? I think the hand with just two fingers is a dead giveaway, don't you? You never know on cases like this. Okay, sure, whatever. This is getting hard to follow. I think we've been hired to be a watchdog on the husband. What do you think, Lou? If you say so, is that the remains of a ham sandwich on his desk? Uh... Lou. What? I'm hungry now. You believe you were hired to keep an eye on the husband while the wife, along with two fingers, robbed him of the blue diamonds? That's my conclusion, yeah. Sounds good to me. Now what? Who are those people? The opposition. There's a bunch of them. Run! Where? Down the alley. Come on. And here we are, caught up in everything on the case. I hope your listeners appreciate all the trouble we've gone through. I hate to tell you, Lou, but I've only got two shots left. Are you kidding me? I told you to group your shots tighter, especially with those two cruds who came up. What's that mean? Remember that life insurance policy we were talking about? Come on, you're joking. Nope, this is the end of the line, but Lou Venice doesn't go down without a fight. Come on, Tabitha, make sure we don't go down without a fight. Sure thing. That was our closest one yet. Thank goodness the police arrived. No doubt. Anyone seen the hot sauce? It's underneath the pile of dirty laundry in your office. 
Sweet. Hold that thought. I'm not sure, but it seemed like the police were a little put out with you and Mr. Venice. Yeah, it's not every day they have to figure out 13 counts of self-defense. That should be one of my podcasts. Your day in court. Let's don't and say we didn't. Anyone for hot sauce on their pizza? I'll pass. I'm sure my listeners are going to love this podcast. Speaking of which, here you go. What's this? An invoice? You can't give an invoice to a podcaster for following you on a case? Then why did we do this stupid thing in the first place unless it was for the cash? Lou. What? Feed your face before I put my fist through it. You've been listening to Stage Struck Audio Theater's production of Lou Venice, The Uncouth Sleuth. In the cast as Lou, Jeffrey Lyon, as Tabitha, Tiana Padilla, and Jamie, Rachel Denny. Script by Brett Jones. Stage Struck Audio Theater is a production of Wichita State University Theater Department. This is Jack Ward. And on behalf of everyone here at the Mutual Audio Network, we wish you, your family, and all your friends safe harbor during these difficult times.